There might not be any holy water or a need to genuflect, but for me, art is a religion. Find out what my cult of one is all about in today's episode of Art Wonderful, starting in 4, 3, 2, Hello art enthusiasts and art lovers. Welcome to episode two of Art Wonderful, the art podcast where art is a religion. I'm your host, Nicholas Harper, and I'm coming to you from my art studio deep within the Rogue Buddha Gallery that's in the heart of the Northeast Minneapolis Arts District. I want to thank you for joining me as we explore everything the arts have to offer. It's the mission of this podcast to spread the gospel of the arts, their essential value to our everyday lives, and to offer a deep dive exploration into this most mysterious of subjects. You can learn more about myself, the Rogue Buddha Gallery, this podcast, and those we have on the show by visiting us online at roguebuddha.com. Click podcast from the menu. And be sure to listen to the end of this and every episode, as I'll be sharing my pick of what art event you simply can't miss this weekend, should you find yourself in our neck of the woods here in the Twin Cities. This is brought to you by our amazing partner, we art enthusiasts simply can't live without, mplsart.com. I mentioned in the trailer to this podcast that I wear many hats in the art world, and it's from various perspectives that I would be approaching the topics covered as they relate to the arts. Just to recap and bring everyone up to speed, I've been a professional artist for 25 years, received a bit of classical realism training at the Atelier, owned the Rogue Buddha Gallery for 20 years, and curated hundreds of artists from Minneapolis and around the world. I also sit on the board of the Northeast Minneapolis Arts District and the Northeast Community Development Corporation, as well as sit on numerous arts committees. I'm also a modest art collector and produce an arts journal called Amorous Vespertine. All of that said, I have a bit of a unique perspective on the arts because of my various roles and involvements with them, which I hope will ultimately add real value to you as you explore your interest in the arts whether you're an artist, collector, or spectator. As this show is still new, I thought now would be the perfect time to define for you what my paradigm is, i.e. what my belief system, where the arts are concerned, is predicated on, and who I think the ideal audience for this show really is. I usually boil it down by saying that art is my religion. Now, that might sound a bit hyperbolic, but believe me, it's not intended to be. And don't be scared of the R word. Around here, religion isn't necessarily a a bad word in and of itself. I think of religion as being nothing more than a belief system based on one's spiritual convictions, practices, and customs. I believe atheism or science can be as much a religion as, say, Hinduism. The lack of a spiritual conviction is, in my opinion, as much a religious statement as one that purports to have any sort of superhuman or extrahuman characteristics. Now, I realize that things can get a bit murky for some when dealing with quote-unquote organized religion or dogma. But rest assured, there's nothing like that going on here. No Kool-Aid for the listener to drink and no holy days of obligation or confessing of sins. Well, although I do hope to convince you to tune in every week when we release a new episode. As far as cults go, this one's fairly benign. At least, that's what all good cults say at the beginning, right? I do, however, make one giant leap of faith, and that's in believing in the soul, or the spirit, the animating essence of a being, if you will. And I'll go so far as to say that that spirit emanates from a source. Call it God, the grand designer, the all. Heck, call it the source. But whatever you call it, And while I don't claim to have any special knowledge as to its nature, I tend to believe that it's there, whatever quote-unquote it is. Most often, I tend to refer to it as the creative principle. That's with a capital C and capital P. From my perspective, in contemplating the universe, our place in it, and how it seems to function, one observation I continue to come back to is that 
things are constantly being made and things are constantly being destroyed. One might say everything tends to be either in a state of growth or a state of decay, perhaps even simultaneously. One might liken this to things as being either in or trending towards chaos, or they're in or trending towards order. What makes this significant is the notion that this flux between chaos and order, well, it's the very essence of the creative principle, lowercase c and p. This is the principle at hand that we as artists partake in when we're making our artwork. To boil it down simply, we may be attempting to give order and meaning to that which is orderless or meaningless, and other times we're trying to destroy that which has order or meaning, only to invent something new, a new order or a new meaning. As artists, essentially, I would argue that we're called to take part in the creative process as co-creators of sorts, of the creative principle, capital CP, as it unravels and experiences itself. Now, I don't want to go too far down this rabbit hole in this episode. There'll be plenty of time for more exploration in the future. But it's from thoughts like this that I tend to believe in an organizing principle to our universe, that, that these laws of birth and death and rebirth and the fact that they seem to be replicable in any and all observable matter that I'm aware of means that there's a key principle or grand law in operation. And I call that law the creative principle. From there, it's an easy jump to making the assumption that if something is seemingly subject to the laws of this principle, that it most likely emanates from it. That is, it finds its source in whatever the source of that principle is. It makes sense to me that there must be some unifying essence that is being affected by this principle. Something that unifies not just us to it, but all of us to each other. Something that allows us to all exist in a common experience or existence. That is, allows me to know that you exist and for you to know that I exist. Or for that matter, for any of us to know that we ourself exist. So what does this have to do with art? I would argue that art is a tangible connective tissue between our reasoning, logical, conscious self and the very creative principle or soul or spirit that resides at our very core of being. You might call it a window to the soul. For years, I've thought of works of art as soulmates. This idea first came to me when I fell in love with a painting by Valerie Wallace at Kelly Ray Tice Gallery. I was in my mid-twenties and only a year or so into owning the Rogue Buddha Gallery. Kelly had an exhibit called Girls with Guns, and I attended the opening. I started making a round through the gallery, and while it was a super strong show, nothing was reaching out and grabbing me. That was until I spotted a piece from across the room. This again isn't hyperbole. I literally saw this piece through a crowded room, and when I did, my heart lit on fire. It was, for all intents and purposes, love at first sight. I went up to the piece and immediately got sucked in, 100%. I knew right then and there, without any thought, and without a doubt, that I had to own this work of art. Now what's notable here is that I had owned my gallery for about a year, and it wasn't until this moment that I began to realize exactly what it was I was doing running a gallery. I mean, I knew I was selling art, but I didn't understand the real gravitas of what that meant. To be truthful, the same could be said for the art I was making myself. While I was painting daily, I was doing so without any clear understanding of my art's significance or potential significance if I chose to follow the line of reasoning or the path that had suddenly presented itself that night at Kelly Ray Tice Gallery. It would ultimately take a few more years for my ideas to coalesce, but slowly I began to understand that the reason someone is drawn to a work of art, as I was with the piece by Wallace, a piece I should note I did buy after a rather lengthy layaway plan. Thanks for working with me and being patient, Kelly, should you be listening to this. But I digress. The reason you fall in love with the painting or sculpture, as I did that night, or with any work of art, it's because you truly are finding a soulmate. 
You're in fact finding a piece of yourself, realizing or experiencing a part of the puzzle that is your most inner being. To put it another way, that work of art is acting like a window, which is allowing you to experience or know yourself in a way you couldn't otherwise. And therein lies why art is, in and of itself, so mysterious, so captivating, so inspiring, and so able to move us at the deepest levels of our core. And frankly, why words so often fail to give voice to the actual experience of being in the presence of art firsthand, or ensconced in the process of making it as an artist. It's because art is revealing a glimpse of the greatest of all mysteries. It's providing us with an opportunity to glimpse at our soul, or at our very being at its core. Its mystery lies in the fact that it connects us to something beyond our ability to reason, our spirit being unknowable in any logical or rational manner. But the spirit, or soul, and even the source, I would argue, can be felt. It can be experienced through a medium. And art is one of the most profound of mediums with which we may know that our soul does exist. Now, for some, this might be a very subtle movement, while for others, they might be moved to tears. You don't have to try and rationalize it or put words to it, as I'm attempting to do now. You can simply enjoy what you enjoy and leave it at that. And that's fine. While I tend to believe that we all manifest from the same center, or the Creative Principle, capital CP, I believe we do so as individual spirits and personalities. It's the differences between our personalities and our individual experiences in life that dictates or informs what art moves us and what art doesn't. For this reason, there simply is no right or wrong answer as to what is art or what is good art. In fact, I believe that's the wrong premise or approach to take when considering the arts. There's only the matter of what provides you as an individual access to your inner being and to what degree it does so. There is no right or wrong answer as to whether or not you like something, just as to whether or not it resonates with you or touches your being. Of course, it's perfectly all right and quite fun for some of us to argue and debate the merits of art and what is good and bad and what resonates and doesn't and to, well, champion what moves us. This is part of the thrill of experiencing the arts as a community. It's just another element of our shared existence and our differences are what give this experience its flavor and propels us forward and allows the creative principle another avenue with which it may continue to manifest. But when all the debating is over and the voices of critics and historians and art writers have subsided, at the end of the day, we're left to ourselves to occupy our, our own headspace with our own thoughts and experiences. And it's here that there is no need to say whether it's good or not. Words no longer matter. It's just about knowing and feeling. And that's a good thing because, like I said earlier, words simply fail when it comes to matters like these, at least in any academic sense. So if you ever feel at a loss for words or feel pressure or even any sort of sense of being dismissed or less than for not being able to keep up with the Joneses in quote-unquote art speak, so to speak, don't let that get to you. I've read enough artist statements, thousands of them in fact, as well as written plenty of my own, not to mention reading academic books and critiques to know just how much that is said and written about the arts is nothing more than gobbledygook. The exception being, of course, this podcast. <clears throat> <clears throat> now, this doesn't mean that you have to believe in this creative principle yourself. You don't have to believe in God or the source or the all. It's perfectly all right if you're atheist or agnostic or indifferent altogether. Like I mentioned earlier, no Kool-Aid here, folks. I use these terms and this belief system to help give structure and frame how it is that I understand my experience on this earthly plane, and to give some form to the experiences that I've had that seemingly have no other rational explanation. I freely acknowledge that I can't prove any of this and that 
my words fail to actually give any logical validity to the notion of a creative principle, capital C, capital P. It's simply the best I can do with language, logic, and reason. The rest, well, I let that manifest through my artwork and through the work of others I exhibit or collect. That being said, if the soul thing doesn't resonate with you, that's fine. Perhaps in that case, you might accept the idea that art is giving you a window to nothing deeper than your own subconscious, whatever that is exactly. The point is, the power of art lives somewhere below the surface of things. That it resonates and moves in a part of us that isn't otherwise readily accessible or perhaps for some of us even known to ourselves as existing. Whether or not you believe in any connectivity to a deeper source isn't even really the purpose here. It's to suggest that through art, as a medium, we better know ourselves. We better come to understand our human condition and our place in the world. The strange irony is that oftentimes it opens us up to more questions, questions that can't in fact be answered. But regardless, it does so in a manner that affords us the opportunity to know, to even ask the questions in the first place. And for me, that's the magic of art. That's something in this world I can be passionate about and something I can wholeheartedly get behind supporting and encouraging others to be passionate about as well. Now, I said earlier that I wanted to talk about who this podcast is for by way of audience. As my mission is to spread the gospel of the arts and their value to our everyday life, this show is really for anyone open to hearing that message. It doesn't matter if you're an artist or a collector, or someone who just wants to pop your head in and see what the arts are all about. It's my intention to celebrate and promote the arts, and to explore them together, as certainly I don't have all of the answers. Ultimately, Art Wonderful is a tool to make art more accessible to anyone willing to participate. Like I said earlier, I don't have any Kool-Aid for you to drink, or hymnals to recite from, or any pews to genuflect in, but I do have a passion for art. And I'd like to share that passion with you in the hopes that you might develop or better understand your own passion for art and ultimately your passion in life. And while I don't have a church or a cathedral, I do in fact have an art gallery, which for me is a cathedral of sorts. And that will be the focus of my next solo commentary a few episodes down the road. The next episode will feature a conversation I had with legendary art guru Dougie Padilla, We'll see what he thinks of art and soul, and if what I've been saying today is really just a bunch of gobbledygook. I hope you can join us for episode 3. Speaking of joining things, there's a couple of artists that would like you to join them at their opening this coming weekend. In the first episode, I shamelessly plugged my own art opening at the Rogue Buddha Gallery, which opens this Friday, the 14th of February. That's right, Valentine's Day. We'll be exhibiting eight amazing artists in an exhibit called Unloved Creatures 2020. You can find out about the details on my website at roguebuddha.com. Oops, I might have accidentally shamelessly plugged myself again. But that's not the point of the segment. The point is to promote all of the amazing art-related events in the Twin Cities. And there's another great opening on Valentine's evening that you should check out. It's called Exquisite Artisanship and features works by Janelle Jacobson and Stuart Lowridge. It's taking place at Raymond Avenue Gallery in St. Paul from 6 until 8 p.m. I've been a fan of Stuart's work for over a decade, and this exhibit will feature both paintings of his and pottery from Janelle. It's sure to be incredible. If you're looking for something truly special on Valentine's Day, after dinner, be sure to hit up Raymond Avenue Gallery, and then make your way over to the Rogue Buddha, as we'll be going late. But Valentine's weekend isn't over then. Be sure to check out episode 3 of Art Wonderful, now available online, and listen to the end for another not-to-be-missed art event opening this weekend. And for more details on the exquisite artisanship exhibition, and of, that was a tough thing to say exquisite artisanship exhibition for more details on that exhibit and a full listing of arts events throughout the twin cities be sure to head over to mplsart.com that's mplsart.com 
They have a passion for sharing the talents of our fair Twin Cities like none other, and their directory of galleries and events, it's unsurpassed. So be sure to check out mplsart.com. So that brings us to a close of episode two of Art Wonderful. I want to thank you for joining me, and I hope you do so again and often. And until next time, remember, the best life is the creative life, and the best self is the artistic self. Cheers. Exquisite Artisanship Exhibition. Exquisite Artisan... Say that 20 times. I can't do it. Had a tough time the first time.